Chico, trying to take my job, eh? Well, maybe. I let you on for a while. Hi, Chico. How's business, huh? All kinds of suckers will. Hey, what did I tell you? Customers, patrons, not suckers. I'm the only sucker around here, letting you con me into spending your nights here. You let me see the red wheel tonight, how will? No, sir, you know our deal. You head straight home at 10 o'clock sharp. Okay. I see that he lives up there. Thanks, Ben. Hello, Will. Oh, Teresa, how's it going? Pretty good. Prince Andrews is here. Ten says he fades. You got yourself a bit. How do you like that betting against the house? My own partner. Will, how you talk? How do you for number eight? Number eight will be. I set it away. <coughs> Come out for the next guy now. Come out. You, Carlo. And I owe you, Mr. Lennon. Why don't you ask Johnny to approve it? Mr. Rulo won't touch it. He said he's your friend. Give him another 500 peso credit, no more. Good evening, Mr. Nanyan. Hello, Mr. Miguel. How are you? Thank you. so smug about. Maybe we should just let him read about it in the newspapers, eh? What are you two charming characters up to now? Well, I tell you this, old buddy, but I'm afraid it's going to cost you a case of champagne. Don't say. Sorry, Will, there's going to be one less bachelor in this world. I mean, after all, you've got a little Chico, 
I'm Ben Teresa, and you have the great honor of getting the bride away. Well, that's just great. And when do you two lovebirds plan this unhappy event? Oh, a couple months. Or sooner. Or sooner. Well, I'm going to have to see about throwing you a little wedding party. Oh, you're darn right. Of course, Uncle Will is always the last to know. <clears throat> well, I think we better get back to work or Uncle Will isn't going to be able to afford your trousseau. Just don't forget to invite me to the wedding. Asking me officially? I will. I thank you. I'm here as a customer. Sure. You know, I don't get you, friend Santos. How long have we known each other? Almost um, five years. Almost five years. And I've been raided almost a dozen times in that period. Eleven, to be exact. Yeah. And you're the only cop that's never pinched me or asked any favors. I keep telling you, I'm not exactly a cop. I'm an um, economic advisor to the government. Well, call it what you will, you're a cop. What do you have to drink? Your pleasure. Andy. Brandy for the inspector and a coffee. Right away, Jack. Tell me, how long has it been since you've been home, Earl? Hmm? The States. Over eight years, you know that. Why? Wouldn't you like to see your old friends? Relatives? I have no relatives. Johnny and I buried our friends in Vietnam. Oh, yes. Johnny, a real war hero. You'll excuse me, friend. Listen, Will. I meant it when I said I like you. Listen. You're up to your neck in something. Something you don't know about. And I don't mean the peanuts in this room. Take a vacation. Go home. Now. This is my home. I'll be seeing you. Chico, we're having a little party tomorrow in the club. You mean I can come inside the club? Yeah. You know, we're going to have to get you a new outfit first. Tell you what, I want you to go home now and tell your mother I'll pick you up right after school tomorrow. Sure, Will. Here, let me have these. I think I can get rid of them for you inside the club. There you are. Gosh. Every night you have customers to buy up all my papers, you have better selling papers than I am. You bet. Get home. And don't forget to give your mother that money. Okay, well, thanks. I'll see you tomorrow. I know Chico's mother and sister, Mr. Lanyon. They appreciate what you do. Brush up on your reading. and surrounded by a thousand V.C. Just getting ready to charge right at us. Go on, go on. No, I will, I will. <clears throat> well, there we were. But in the meantime, you see, Will had found out that this V.C. major in charge was a real gambling man. So you know what Will did? No, what? Well, he gets his V.C. major on the walkie-talkie, and he says, Major, five will get you ten. You can't drop a mortar shell right here on this bunker. I mean, can you imagine our lives are at stake? What happened? Well, 
That major was the luckiest man I ever knew. His first show came in and blew us all to hell. <laughs> well, 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 if it isn't the Bobsy Twins. Why, Chico, I'd have never recognized you so handsome. Oh, you too. Should we thank the young lady, Chico? Thank you. Where have you two sports been? Well, we now have the best-dressed newsboy in Manila. Well, we sure do. <laughs> I'll get your coffee. And a uh, straight ginger ale for him. Oh, it's all right. I'm driving. Hmm. How about it, Teresa? Are you happy? Oh, yes, very. Oh, you will. How is it no lucky girl ever tied you down? <sighs> well, I made a couple of tries. Didn't work out. Two different games. Cards and women just don't mix. Well, maybe someday you'll find a woman more important than those tables. You can go on up with us, Chico. Come on. Maybe. Well, about Johnny. You know I'm his intended bride, and yet I know so little about him. Mm-hmm. Well, I can say this. Generally, Johnny is great. But in a card game, or with a pair of dice, he'd use his own mother for stakes. Oh, well. Well, it's not quite as serious as all that. Just don't gamble with him. He's always two moves ahead. Two moves ahead of what? There you go, Chico. Telephone, Mr. Rulo. Okay, be right there. I'll see you in a minute. And, uh, honey, no matter what he tells you, don't believe a word he says. <laughs> something happens to me, why, uh, don't try and play hero, huh? I mean, I dealt the hand. I'm a good loser, but watch out for Teresa for me, will you? Okay. Ask me no questions, I'll tell you no lies. Is that it? You're a good friend, Will. Hey, where have you been? You're marrying me, remember? 
Well, any man that would forget that is just plain crazy, right, Will? Yeah, you sure will. I could stand a little fresh air. I'll take a run out to his place. Hold down the door while I'm gone. Okay. But will you stop worrying? You know how he hates having people worry about him? I'll bring the lug back if I have to drag him. It's already 12.30. If Mr. Lanyon finds you here, he'll give us more trouble. I wait. I go when Will comes back. I sold all but three papers. He'll come soon. Chico, go home. Go home now. going to ask you. Somebody jumped me. Johnny. What happened, Will? Will? His face. Hardly recognize it. Why? Who do that? I'm asking you. It was 
There's an old man, I'm telling you that. I've seen a lot of lousy things a man can do to another man, but not that. Here's an animal. But this animal has a name. Johnny called him Orpheus. I'm telling you, you find that man. You find Orpheus. If I had a pencil for every time I've heard find Orpheus, I'd be a rich man. What did Johnny have to do with Orpheus? I don't know. Some kind of a business deal. Johnny was upset and didn't tell me. So the great Vietnam War hero did business with Orpheus. Now listen here, friend Santos. Johnny Ruler wasn't only my partner. He was my friend. Real good friend. I'll tell you about the man Johnny did business with. Orpheus. In April of 1965, three ships flying a flag of convenience were discovered running munitions to the Reds in Vietnam. We caught one of them. He died with the name Orpheus on his lips. That was the first time we heard his name. In 1966, we captured a gang smuggling counterfeit pesos into the Philippines. We caught them all, except the one man who engineered the plot. So he's sort of an international racketeer. This isn't some game we're playing. He wholesales red opium in excess of $1 billion a year. Did you hear that figure, Lanyon? $1 billion worth of morphine and heroin. He's the most valuable man the Reds have. Is here amongst us, somewhere down in the streets. We'll hunt him down and find him. But up to now, he doesn't have a face, just a name, Orpheus. All those nights he used to hang around the club, watching and waiting. No wonder you never closed us down permanently. We could have, any time. But we knew Johnny was tied in in some way. It was just a matter of time. I can't believe it. Did you recognize the man who attacked you? Tell me what you know. Anything you can remember. Earlier today, he said he had to meet this guy. Who were his friends? Where did he go when he wasn't at the club? Well, I guess I was his only close friend, Teresa. Does she know? Not yet. What about trips? Hmm? Oh, trips. We used to go once in a while. Where? I don't know, just vacation business trips. Did Teresa go with him? No. He usually went alone. I guess I better tell her. I can if you want. No. I guess you know I'll have to close the club world. It's okay by me. Any word for Mr. Rolo or Mr. Lanyon? No, Mr. Rolo. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Lanyon. I sent Chico home. He sure is stubborn. Oh, by the way, Mr. Essa was asking for you and Mr. Rulo. including Teresa. Where is she? Tear everybody out and close up. But we still have a few players. 
Give them complimentary chips and tell them to come back tomorrow. Now, you heard me. Close it up. Right. Oh, well, thank heaven you're here. Where have you been? Where's Johnny? I'm just calling his apartment. Put down that phone, Teresa. He's not there. What is it, Will? Where's Johnny? There's been some kind of an accident. Oh, go on. Tell me, where is he? He's dead. Oh, my God. I want to go to him. I don't believe it. Who? Why, Johnny? When, when did it happen? Sometime tonight. Oh, Will. Oh, Why? Why? Santos, here I am. What's so important? This way. 
I'd like some facts to back up what you said about Johnny. What's this all about? Fisherman found him about an hour ago. No. No, he was only sent home two hours ago. How could he drown? He didn't drown. He was strangled. Good night, Mr. Esa. Who would do that to a little boy? Why? I told you what kind of a man would do that. It's all part of a long list. Why, Chico? Oh, there was some sort of reason. And someday we'll find out. You could wait around for that someday, but not me. I've had it. Go slow, Will. Be careful. That's the way you do things, isn't it, Santos? And look where it gets you. Johnny. I'm sorry this has to happen, but the club will be closed for a while. Now you'll find a bonus in your checks. That's the way Johnny would have wanted it. I'll call you when we're about to reopen. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lanyon. You're going about it the wrong way, Will. About what? Don't be coy. Yes. What's the matter, Santos? Is the ad too small? Or should I have offered more money? It's not my will. You're creating a storm. I meant to. Don't you realize this kind of exposure you can drive this man deeper into hiding? Or smoke him out. And who's Bacar? You've been withholding information. I meant to ask you. I think she's a woman. Let me know when you find her. Let you know? What do you think you're running? Your own private war? Do you realize you probably ruined several years of careful work? Hundreds of Allied agents in Asia have been gradually tightening a net around this man, and you just tore it open. Maybe, maybe not. I'm a gambler, friend Santos, and I'm gambling $10,000 that name Bakar is going to scare our man. Enough for him to take some chances. You're going back to the States, Will. If I have to deport you... Now listen, somewhere in this city is some little guy with some information. Knowledge that gives him sleepless nights. Ordinarily, he'd go to, go to his grave with that information. But he likes the feel of money. And I've got 10,000 reasons why he's got to see me. And I'll tell you something else. Orpheus knows that too. In Asia, 
The man who rides a tiger plays a dangerous game. I'll have some men stay close to you. Well, if you want to keep your man alive, just keep him real close, because I'll kill him the first chance I get. Amen. Excuse me, Mr. Lanyon. Forgive me. What a pity, that boy. This afternoon, I understand, there'll be services for your late partner. Both in one day. What a pity. Yes. You'll excuse me? Uh, oh, please, Mr. Lanyon. Uh, my card. De Rosario. Amado de Rosario. Just in case you should care to call on me. your friend. Just a guy I know. Look, Santos, you and your boys are so close I can't breathe. You started it with your foolish reward. You make a big target. Yeah. Do you know this man, uh, 
a mother del Rosario. I think you've asked enough questions, Santos. I'm giving you a choice. Either get out of this country or go to jail. Some choice. I can't help it. I can't afford to have another murder in my hands because of you. Now listen here, friend Santos. You're not going to use me as a patsy because of your bungling. Okay. Okay, I guess I could use a vacation. Is Hong Kong far enough for you? See that it catches the first plane. You still don't believe me, do you, Santos? Should I? No. Let's get out of here. By the way, I'm cabling Inspector Rogers of the Hong Kong police. He'll be expecting you. Just to make sure that... Uh, that you stay out of trouble. Thanks. It isn't just a vacation, is it, brother? No. Well, please don't go. I'm frightened. If anything happens to you, I'll... Don't you worry. Look, I'll probably be back in a couple of days. Santos doesn't stay so long. Look, you've got a big job ahead of you. I want you to make sure that Chico's family is well taken care of. You can do that, can't you? nothing but ocean in between, I don't have much choice. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Why don't we do the town together? Where are you staying? Not exactly sure. Leave the Hong Kong Hyatt. It's great. Me too. We'll be seeing a lot of each other. Yes, Jones. See you later. Wow, you must be Inspector Rogers. Santos said I should expect you. Yo, Will Lanyon. I have your description. Uh, what's this Mr. Jones business? Just a fellow passenger. Didn't feel like answering a lot of questions. Good idea. Come on, I have a car waiting. I understand we'd help you spend a quiet vacation. Well, I'm all for that. Thank you. 
A couple of days. Coffee, Inspector. All right. Thank you. What do you have, Inspector? Uh, just tea, I think. Tea, I coffee. I suppose you heard what happened in Manila. Something to do with Orpheus. Very impractical, this vendetta business. Much better you leave this sort of thing to us. But where does it get you? Oh, we'll get him, all right. We pick his co-workers up one by one. We'll eventually put him in a corner. I can't wait that long. Now look here, Lanyon. I want you to enjoy your stay here. But we have our own way of doing things. If you don't cooperate, I'm going to have to severely restrict your movements. Do we understand each other? Yes, Inspector. As a matter of fact, I have some business to settle here. You might be able to help. I'd be delighted to. Providing, of course, it's not in connection with Orpheus. Yes, of course. Um, a certain party here in Hong Kong owed my late partner a large sum of money. Oh? I've never met this person, but I believe it's a woman. Do you know her name? A car. No. It's a strange name. Sure that's the right name? Quite sure. I'll put a man on it first thing in the morning. I'd appreciate that, Inspector. In return, please confine your activities to something a little mild. Hmm? couple of my men on that Bacar woman without much luck. You guys sure start out early. Oh, we used to it. However, I have a thought. I have an old friend, lived here for years. He knows the colony inside out. Have you had breakfast? No. Fine. Right.
Roger. Oh, good morning. What would you like? Coffee. Coffee. Sorry we didn't have any luck this morning on this Bacar woman. A friend of mine will be here shortly. Perhaps he'll be able to help. You look a little distraught this morning, Lenin. I had a brush with a couple of local thugs on motorcycles this morning. Did he get the plate number? No. Too bad. Hello, Tim. Here you are, Alex. May I present Mr. Will Lanyon? Captain Alec Williamson, Royal Navy. Captain? Mr. Lanyon? Tea, please. Well, now, Mr. Lanyon, now I'm here, what can I do for you? I understand, Captain, that you just about know everyone in Hong Kong. <laughs> I'm looking for a woman who is indebted to my late business partner. Ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. I should have thought that Tim here was a better authority on the fairer sex than I am. However, I'm flattered. What's the lady's name? Picard. Picard? What makes you so sure she's a lady? He always referred to her. She's no lady, believe me, Mr. Lanyon. She, and I use that word, she's a rotting mass of steel and second-rate diesel oil. A 400-tonner that flies the waters of the China Sea. A tramp freighter. She is a ship. Yes, of course. I should have guessed. Now look here, Lanyon. What is this riddle? A woman turning into a ship? Are you pulling my leg? No, believe me, Inspector. Just some bad guessing on my part. What in heaven's name does your partner want to do with a heart like that? She never pulls such a large port as I know. She flies a so-called flag of convenience. She avoids customs officers, government ships. She's a petty smuggler. Yes, Lanyon, what did your partner want with this ship? Believe me, Inspector, I tell you if I knew. Do you know where I might be able to find her? No, sorry. She wasn't always notorious. A few years ago, she was uh, a little dusty, but uh, quite respectable. I knew her captain. Quite a passable fellow. You mean he sold her? Oh, I think so. Do you know where he is? I haven't the slightest. I haven't seen him in four years. Do you remember his name? A Dutchman. Bad something, uh, I think. He was sort of a half caste. His mother was Burmese. Do you know where I might be able to find him? Oh, see here, London. Why all this chasing round for an ex sea captain? Vandalin! That's it, Vandalin. I remember now. I met him about a year after he sold his ship. He was living in a sort of rundown hotel, the Great Pacific, I think, Bangkok. Vanderbilt in Bangkok. Thank you very much, Captain. Thank you, Inspector.
speak English? An old friend of mine recommended your hotel. I'd kind of like to find him. Does Captain Vanderlyn still stay here? No. Know where I might find him? Vanderlyn, your friend? Yeah. I haven't seen him in years. Vanderlyn is not here. Hey, hold on. Know where he is? Temple Guapo. I was once known by that name. Now you're... I am a Buddhist. If you are wondering, I can assure you, I'm not in hiding. Not even from Morpheus? What do you want of me? Morpheus. What do you want of him? He's a tormented one. Wild animal, he will be bored inside. Where is he? I don't know. But you sold your ship to Orpheus. Fair half, if that is his name. Where is your ship, the Bikar? You don't understand. I left your world of hate and violence. You asked me to reflect some forgotten memories. If I give you information, some way to find this Bokar, what then? I will lead you to more violence and death. Perhaps Captain Bandolin will do that. Should the man I am now permit this in good conscience? He murdered two people. One a very good friend of mine, and a little boy I love very much. It is time for evening prayer. I am not sure what I must do. My decision lies heavy on me. Will you go now, come back later? and bank
I'll get a doctor. No, stay. I don't have much time. Look at this. Orpheus. Does it matter? There are many of them. I'll get him, I promise you. I see you as I was. The sight of what had been happened to me would make you swear an oath of vengeance for me. Listen. I have learned the justice of men is uncertain. Justice with head is a terrible burden. No one man is equal to it. Promise you will remember. I have learned about car trouble and water between Borneo and Zamboanga. That's all I know, my friend. True love, true justice came from those who love. to Zamboanga. Huh. You know, things are beginning to piece together. But, Will, where have you been? Until I got your cable, I was scared to death with worry. Look, I'm sorry I didn't have time to write Teresa. What's been happening? I don't know. Santos doesn't say a word, and since yesterday, his office says he's out of town. Oh, Chico's mother and sister are going to be fine. And Will, me too. Good. Now, look, when Santos gets back into town, be sure and tell him where I've gone. Well, be careful. Don't worry. I will. ships in Thank you. 
Inspector Rogers called me from Hong Kong about the Barkov being a bomb freighter. I don't get it. We located her a few miles off Zulu, between here and Borneo. We arranged for the Navy to capture her and bring her into port. And uh, did you? Orpheus wasn't aboard. But we did find a large shipment of opium aboard, and her crew is in jail. I must say, in a way, you're, you've been a real service. Thanks. It cost the life of a man. What do you mean? Orpheus caught up with the old skipper. Poor old duck. I guess they were afraid he'd talk. He was afraid of innocent people dying. Pretty ironic. And all the time you had this tub here without firing a shot. Not exactly. When our patrol boat near the Macaw, she was unloading some of her cargo onto several model fishing boats. In an attempt to conceal or destroy the evidence, the captain ordered the fishermen killed. One of the dead men was a blood relative of a ruling Datu. Is that why the streets are empty? We're having a very tough time protecting the Macaw's crew, even in jail. As you would say, they're on a war path. I feel pity for any man in Zamboanga who did business with the Bakar. Hope you didn't inquire about the ship on your way in. Not exactly. Good. The mere mention of this ship is a death warrant, and the Moros do not wait for an explanation. You're a very lucky man, Lanyon. So far. Thanks for the encouragement. What about Orpheus? The skipper's not smart enough to be obvious. He can't even give us a description of him. I've been digging through his papers here, but uh, nothing. A blind alley, eh? I'm afraid so. At least for the time being. Come on, let's go. My job is finished here. I'm catching the government plane back to Manila. You want to ride? No, I'm taking a later plane. I think I'll stay around here for a while. Listen, Will. I tell you as a friend, forget Orpheus. We'll get him in due time, in our own way. Yeah, maybe. You want to ride into town? No, I think I'll walk a bit. Now, remember what I said. While you're here, be careful. Don't ask questions. It'll be a long time before the Morris cool off. Will you have a drink? Not now, man. Not now. Just waiting here for a shot of the sunset, man. You told me in Hong Kong it's... It's beautiful, man. There's an old Spanish fort in here. It's beautiful. Just, just the scene, man. Why don't you come along for the ride? Sure. Take care of my things, will you? Here. So you're 
Orpheus. No way. He's the big man. What happens now? We're going to take a little trip. And this is the ticket. After you. You know, Spock, you can't take a hint. We've been, like, cool with you. And all you've given us is a bad thing. And this is it. I do have friends who may worry. Not for long. You can't imagine how glad I am to finish this contract, collect the money and split. Mind telling me where he is? It's wild. All the time you were doing your thing in Hong Kong and Bangkok, he was right in Manila. And you know, Lanyon, blow your mind. Guess where I get paid off? How should I know? It's your place. The club? Yeah. About an hour after I get back, that's the time I get paid. We'll take that horse and buggy. I'll play it cool, Lanyon. What would you say? Man, drive. I have friends here. Worry about it. Not for long. I guess I next your employer's boat trip. Yeah, he was kind of fond of it, the car. Suppose you and your boss are very unhappy about what happened to her. What are you up to, Lenny? Didn't you know? The Moros are real interested in the Bacar and in anyone who had anything to do with it. Hey, you! Down. We'll take care of our business right here. Oh. Better listen, Smith. You know, when you spoke of the Bacar, you signed your own death warrant. From a bunch of fishermen, I can take care of them. A driver has probably told ten of his friends. They in turn have told ten of theirs. You talk too much, Lanyon. Turn round. This is far enough. So long. Okay, Lanyon, I can come in there and get you. Come on in. I've got some friends here who are dying to meet you. What makes you think they like you any better, Lanyon? Try that shot, Smith. You did me a real big favor. Cancel any idea that we were friends.
right. A fellow off there by the name of Smith had something to do with the Bacar. Your heart. Just a scratch, nothing serious. We'll take you to the hospital. Won't be necessary. I have a plane to catch. Take care, huh? I don't want anything to happen to you. I'll see you later. freighter. They say he jumped ship with your clothes. And a little bit messed up beyond recognition. <laughs> you don't really believe I am here, do you, Will? Huh? You know, uh, Will, I must say I, uh, I was really touched. I had no idea you cared so much, chasing after my killer, the big bad Orpheus. I must be losing my mind. You know, it was kind of fun at first. I just had you watched. Until you talked to that Mouse Del Rosario. And of course, when you found Vanderlyn, I had to send Smith in after you. We were getting a little too close for comfort. <laughs> By the way, um, where is Smith? Dead. Uh, that's too bad. He was useful. Why, Johnny? Why? Oh, don't go wholly on me, Will. I'll tell you why. Because nobody gives a damn. Look, we bled our guts out in Vietnam, and who cared? We got a trouncing, and for what? 
and it took me quite a while before I realized what a sucker I'd been. Oh, sure, they're going to call me a lot of nasty names now. But remember what we called the Germans and the Japs? And what happened? Suddenly we acted like uh, it never happened. Like it was just a big bad dream. Now we're all buddies. Listen to the kids, Will. To them, the P.C. are just like a bunch of ex-boy scouts, and we hated their guts. No, Will, my friend. I may seem like a heel now. The way they're writing history today, but in no time, I'll be the biggest hero since Ho Chi Minh. And you? You would never have known. Silas was getting too many ideas. So I just had to lose my identity and move on. All those people dead. The expendables were like Vietnam, remember? Like Chico? Yeah, well, I... I'm sorry about Chico, Will. I guess I uh, was getting a little sentimental. I... After you found what you thought was my body, I came back to the club for a last look. And, well, I thought I was out of sight, but Chico saw me. I had to get rid of him. I guess you'd say Chico was accidental. Accidental? God in heaven's name, what kind of a man are you? Oh, come off it, Sergeant. I remember a few hundred villages and a few hundred dead people. How many notches have you got in your gun? Now, you won't do it. You haven't got it in you. Remember me? And your old buddy, Johnny. That's where you're wrong. Johnny is dead. I saw him hanging. No, you're not Johnny Rulo. Not the guy I thought I once knew. You're Orpheus, remember? I've got to do it. Not just for Chico and all the people, like that old man in Bangkok. The thousands of people that you haven't touched yet. I've got to do it for them. It's like you say, Johnny, you're expendable. Just a matter of when. Well. Teresa, get out of here. Teresa? Hey, how's my girl, huh? Sure, it's me, honey. Yeah, you look really great. So I'm sorry about worrying you like that, but I just couldn't tell you. You understand. I... Oh, boy, I was coming back for you. All that Will said was true. Oh, you, uh, you heard all that, huh? Well, don't you worry your pretty little head about politics. If... You're not really sore at me, are you? Get out of here, Teresa. Now. Well, what are you going to do? That's my girl. Come on, honey. Don't look a little hot under the collar right now, but he'll understand. No, you don't understand. We buried you, Johnny. You're dead. Now, don't talk crazy, honey. Come on. Stay right where you are. Don't do it, Will. Will, she, uh, she has a point. I'm not thinking of him. It's you, Will. That'll be Santos. Please leave him to Santos, Will. I meant it when I said Johnny's dead. Do as she says, Will. Put the gun down. Guess I can face friend Santos alone. So long, Teresa. I'll be, uh, I'll be seeing you, chum. No, oh, don't forget that old adage about uh, women and cards. Be careful.
wasn't it after all? Call the station, have someone take this away. Maybe you better sit down. No, I'm all right. Aren't you gonna ask what happened? I can guess. You can tell me tomorrow. Now I want you to listen. It's all over, do you hear me well? I want you to take Teresa, go out that door, and don't come back. This place is closed for good. And I'm giving you 48 hours to get into some other kind of business or get out of the Philippines. Do you understand? Come on, Teresa. You know who Orpheus was? No, not him, the real one. According to the story, he died and came back, but only once. Johnny should have known that. I guess part of me always will. Does that sound terrible? No, it doesn't. What do we do? Do we say it never happened? Or do we forget? No. No, we don't forget. Somehow we pick up the pieces and go on. <laughs> 